Okay, so what I've done here, you can see these colors. I laid out on this piece of paper here originally. This was just to clear the translucent, I shouldn't call it clear. It's a translucent gum modifier, GM30. This was the gum light body three, which is very, very light bubble gum pink. Uh, I have a picture of this that I'll show how they look prior to these mixtures. This G24, our darker red color, uh, our darker pink tissue color is here. You can see it does not look normal now, nor does the G23. If you recognize that shade, this is the G23. All of these in your current state you're seeing were mixed with this IC12. It's a black intensive color. So I put a little bit of this black intensive color, which will squirt it out here into all four of these mixtures. The Luster Paint A, I decided to try it since the Luster Paint A is a super heavy, think of it as like shade A45 um, intensity in chroma. It is the primary Denton shade of the A range, which is a true reddish brown. And this is heavy on the brown. It's almost as close to a, tr a dark, dark mahogany as you can get. Uh, in its pure viscous gel state of the luster paint consistency. And so that was there also. And I was putting a little bit of that in there just to see. And I kind of like what it does to the thing, uh, to the color. But it's really just a matter of what you need and you kind of create by your eye. Um, so trying to hit this extremely intense ethnic shade uh, that someone sent me a picture of. I'm just going to show you quickly. I would typically take our composite primer or the new Gradia Plus acrylic primer. That liquid, I would brush all over everywhere that I plan on putting Gradia on. When I brush that on, obviously this will have been properly aerobrated first, and you wouldn't see any opticlase on these teeth. This would all look like this side here. This would be, I'd put the opticlase everywhere, I mean the uh, composite or acrylic primer everywhere, including slightly up on the neck of the teeth, so in case I need to push up here for the gingival trim to get a correct primed and bondable surface. I would take this, put it in the Labo Light Duo for one minute, it comes out, I'm going to start building, okay? Ideally, you wanna start with a flowable type material first, okay? And so just as a, to get a really good connection layer, I am going to put, we have a modeling liquid you can use, but since I'm kind of in a little bit of a pinch here with how I'm doing this video, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the composite primer here just to make this surface a little bit easier for me to work off of. And like I said, normally this is how I would apply the composite primer and then I would like here that for a minute, but I don't wanna sit here on this video waiting for a minute, right? So I can pick this material up. Just think of this as trying to get a nice, this is all about surface wettability, right? In other words, I'm getting maximum connectivity to the substrate by using this flowable material first. Okay, doesn't have to be super thick. Think of it as a wash fire on zirconia or lithium disilicate basically. You just need that initial contact layer because you are getting the most intimate connection to the substrate that you can get by using a flowable material. Okay. Now, you see that right there? I'm going to quickly put my loops on, go around, make sure I'm not up on the neck of the teeth anywhere that I don't want to be. Because once I tack this, that's the point of no return. Then I'm stuck trying to grind that off, which I do not want to have to do. I'm just going around. These are the Gradia Plus instruments that Smile Line designed. Uh, this is their instrument. Uh, they made some of these for us um, that we sell, but you can also buy these directly from Smile Line. The only difference is we have them on each end of the handle as opposed to just one instrument for one piece. I'm gonna take this and I'll tack it for just a few seconds. You don't need to tack these for like 10 seconds, right? Just a couple of seconds is enough to freeze it to where it doesn't move and smear on you. Now that I have that done, I'm going to begin to build my Gradia gum, okay? This case 
has a pretty intense shading to it. Um, it's like a, our heavy color shade on steroids, basically. I like this instrument because I can really do a fair amount with it. Um, shout out to Bill Murray for being the first person I saw that had this instrument. The composite doesn't stick to it. Well, it's just a really, really nice instrument. You can see here how I'm able to kind of push and almost like pull and drag material around with this instrument. I'm gonna stop right there. Again, go back to my smile line instrument. Remember, it's always important to maintain control of that gingival trim before you tack it. Because even just a mere two second tack, you're stuck with this material on your teeth at that point. You cannot remove it even before it's final cured. You're just stuck with it. So I'm always gonna go through there, kind of look down through this way too. This is kind of on here smoothly, but I like where I'm at. So I'm gonna tack it. Again, this doesn't take 10 seconds. It only takes these few seconds that you saw me just do, right? And look at this. See how I'm touching this? Surface is live and ready to be added to continue the build, but it's not, uh, not uh, cured on. So you only need those few seconds to get that tacked. So because this patient is very challenging, kind of wanted to see, and I can tell you already, I don't think I'm going to get the intensity that I need from that. I think I'm going to need to use just the straight black and brown modifiers. Because what I want to do is just come in here and just kind of punch some color in here. And then lay over that with either some clear. Sometimes you can use some clear uh, gradient material in order to give you the depth that you need um, without changing your color, right? If you need more dimension but you are like super happy with your color uh, scheme at that point. So there's your IC12 black that I used to create those colors, right? And there is the Luster Paint A shade. So you can tell what I mean when I say the picture is like shade A45 instead of A4. So now I'm gonna take these colors I am going to put just a little bit more composite on here so I can actually build up a little bit of a tissue dimension. Remember, some people struggle with the paste when you first start using it because they you cut it off the tube. I call it like a log material. Um, if you have to keep your hands really clean, I roll it between my finger and thumb and that will uh, it allows me to really it's a combination of the friction of pressure plus my uh, heat from my fingers softens it up I do like this little brush too this is simply a craft brush the key is very short very stiff bristles I use this mainly for doing some blending like if these were two totally different shades that I was trying to blend in together. I like this because you see how I'm punching and dragging.
this kind of gives me the ability to manipulate, create texture that I can then come into and do that with. Well, I tell you, putting this black directly in here is definitely what this particular case is going to need. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to pick up on that. I don't have my bench light on because I typically will turn my task light off. I have very, very strong LED lights. And I have found that, uh, well, partly because I'm slow, um, but I have found that it will set my uh, composite up just a little bit on me, on my, on my uh, working surfaces. And I don't mean set them up like cure them, but it can, it can affect the consistency of my material if I let my task light from my bench um, remain on. So again, all I'm doing here is trying to reestablish my gingival trim. See that little spot there that got away from me? Now I've got the no choice but to grind that off later. Like to look at this from various angles, just like when you're waxing a denture, right? Just trying to Control my root eminence shape, contour. Boy, that's starting to look pretty close to the right shade, I will tell you. I've got a lot more to go on that, uh, on punching in that um, intense dark coloration. But I tell you, that's, uh, and this patient had pretty heavy, and I do mean heavy, um, tissue texture here. So that's key, is when you get that texture punched in, to go ahead and obviously tack that and I can go real heavy here because I know I'm going to add more material. I'm going to tack that for a couple of seconds. Okay and we're back. And at this point I'm pretty darn happy with everything. I just need to start putting my coloration in. I do want to try some of this brown. This, this A, I shouldn't call it brown, but that's really what it is. If you can see this. So I've got that there. It's time for a little bit more of the IC12. I'm going to attack what I did. Now at this point, I am going to go ahead and turn my task light on. I just want to, one, I need to be able to see the colors at this point. Okay, so that's how this looks right now. This is close, but it is definitely not a match for what this picture looks like. But I need to freeze this so I can continue uh, punching that color in. So again, I'm just tacking it. 
Now at this point, just for the longevity of the video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to continue to punch in. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of the clear in here, but much more intense black because I do need some dimension to help carry this color instead of just making this all external. So I'm gonna completely blacken this GM30, this translucent, because um, it's not a clear, it's a translucent. Um, perhaps a clear might work even a little bit better, so I may mix some clear up as well. But then I'm gonna punch that color in in order to have it carried into some actual composite resin instead of it all just being external by doing it this way. And then I'll show you the end of this uh, when I'm done. But as far as the base parent color of the dark intense excellent shade this particular patient presents with, uh, this is pretty well dead on. Uh, so anyway, I'll follow up with you when I'm done uh, characterizing the rest of the color.